So our speaker today is Noah Rosenberg, who is an associate professor at the University of Michigan. Noah started out doing a PhD in pure math and got distracted in biology, completing a PhD which I believe with I believe Marcus Feldman. Is that right? Yep. Okay, and then he did a postdoc at the University of Southern California. So his research spans a broad range from proving theorems about evolutionary models to quite applied data-driven work on the inference of human evolutionary history. He's going to treat us to a little theory today in his talk entitled Consistency Properties of Species Tree Inference Algorithms Under the Multi-Species Coalescent. Take it away. Okay. Um, uh, does everybody see my screen okay? Yep, looks good. Okay. So, uh, so let me just uh, first thank Eric for organizing uh, the Phyla seminar and for choosing uh, gene trees and species trees as uh, one of the topics uh, and uh, for uh, including me in the seminar series. So what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about uh, some species tree inference algorithms and their consistency properties uh, under uh, the multi-species coalescent, uh, the, mo uh, the model that we use to study the evolution of gene trees conditional on species trees. So as many of you are probably aware, uh, there are a variety of different reasons why uh, different genes can produce different inferences about species relationships. And the uh, approach, uh, the uh, phenomenon that I'm going to focus on today uh, as a basis for discordance of gene trees and species trees is uh, incomplete lineage sorting or deep coalescence. So if you look here in this picture, uh, we can see three species represented in the species tree, uh, which is uh, shown with the black uh, outline. And within each of the three species, uh, one gene lineage has been sampled, uh, red lineage in species A, green lineage in species B, and then a blue lineage uh, in species C. And what we can see is that uh, along this internal branch of the species tree, we might expect the red lineage from A and the green lineage from B to find a common ancestor. Uh, but since this branch is fairly short, they fail to find a common ancestor along the branch. And it turns out that in this example, B and C find a more recent common ancestor uh, than either lineage uh, does with A. So that's the phenomenon in which lineages survive uh, farther into the past than uh, might, might be expected based on the shape of the species tree, uh, leading to gene tree topologies that disagree with the topology of the species tree. So let me talk for a few minutes about how we might study this phenomenon of gene tree discordance using a model. Uh, so we're using the uh, multi-species coalescent to model probabilistically the properties of gene tree topologies, assuming a species tree topology and branch lengths as fixed parameters. And this is a model uh, that's been used really back to the early days of the coalescent as a model in population genetics. Uh, starting from Hudson and Tajima in 1983. And we treat the species tree topology and branch lengths as parameters and allow gene lineages uh, to evolve within populations according to a coalescent model within each of the populations uh, separately. Uh, we can think of each branch of a species tree, each edge, as being a separate population in which lineages uh, evolve in a standard way for a single population. And then we combine those uh, different edges of the species tree uh, together according to certain rules. So the main uh, properties of the model that will be useful uh, in the talk today are uh, as follows. Uh, we assume that coalescences of gene lineages occur within species with the same rate of coalescence for each lineage pair. The rate of coalescence uh, within a particular species or population is proportional to the number of pairs of lineages. And finally, when species, tree, uh, when species splits are encountered, uh, looking back in time, 
lineages from all groups descended from the split are allowed to coalesce. So within any one branch uh, of the species tree, uh, the greater the number of lineages, the faster a coalescence of a pair of lineages will occur. And whenever we encounter a split of two species in the species tree, we now allow lineages from all of the species descended from that split to uh, have a chance to coalesce along the branch above that split. Uh, mathematically, uh, there are a few uh, properties uh, that will be useful. Uh, if we consider I lineages in a population, the waiting time until some pair of lineages among those I lineages uh, coalesces is exponentially distributed with rate proportional to I choose two. Second, there's a known function uh, which I'll call G i j of t for the probability that i lineages have j ancestors at t time units in the past. And we measure time units in units of population size, where population size is n. Uh, so for example, g11 one one of t is 1. Uh, one lineage always has one ancestor, no, no matter how, back, how far back in time we go. Uh, the exponential property, g21 of t is 1 minus e to the minus t. Uh, g22 two two of t is e to the minus t. And so on here are the three probabilities for three uh, lineages uh, having one, two, or three ancestors at t time units in the past. Uh, two uh, rules uh, that will be important. Uh, one, g i i of zero is equal to one. So i lineages have i ancestors at time zero. And second, uh, as time goes to infinity, uh, I lineages will always coalesce down to one lineage. So the limit as T goes to infinity of G I one of T is equal to one. So those are the rules for the multi-species coalescent uh, that are um, uh, uh, given outline of the model. And using uh, this model, uh, Degnan and Salter in 2005 described the complete probability distribution of gene tree topologies conditional on a species tree parameter, topology and branch lengths, under this multi-species coalescent model. And the approach that they used to derive this probability distribution was to subdivide the computation over what they've called coalescent histories. So a coalescent history gives the list of species tree branches on which gene tree coalescences occur. Here are two examples of a gene tree and a species tree. And in both cases, the gene tree topology matches the species tree topology. However, in the tree on the left, the coalescence in the gene tree connecting the lineages from A and B occurs on the internal branch of the species tree and the coalescence uh, that uh, connects A and B in the tree on the right occurs above the root of the species tree. So those represent two distinct coalescent histories with the same gene tree topology, two different locations in which the coalescences in the gene tree can occur. So the computation of Degnan and Salter uh, starts by supposing we have a, gene tr a species tree S uh, topology and branch lengths, and then we consider a gene tree uh, G, which is the topology only. The probability of obtaining uh, this particular gene tree G, given species tree S under the multi-species coalescent, can be written as a sum over coalescent histories of the joint probability of obtaining the gene tree and the coalescent history, given the species tree topology and branch lengths, and it turns out that by writing the computation in this way, uh, the joint probability uh, is not that hard to compute, and uh, it's also not that hard to enumerate the coalescent histories in order to obtain the complete probability distribution of gene tree topologies given species trees. Uh, so this uh, computation uh, gives rise to a lot of uh, interesting uh, things that we can do to understand what happens when we apply uh, species tree inference algorithms to methods, uh, to when we apply species tree inference algorithms 
to gene tree topologies generated under the model. Uh, so we can now uh, simulate uh, gene tree uh, topologies uh, from uh, probability distribution. We can also do uh, analytical computations of what happens to a species tree inference algorithm when taking gene tree topologies uh, directly from the probabilities computed under the model. So a simple example uh, is the classic computation using three taxa. For three taxa, the probability that a gene tree uh, matches the species tree can be con decomposed into two parts uh, represented by the two coalescent histories. So the first piece of this probability is the probability that the gene tree is determined uh, in the two species period of the species tree. So the probability that uh, coalescence of lineages A and B happens along uh, the internal branch. And as we saw before, uh, that probability is G21 of T or 1 minus E to the minus T. Now if those two lineages fail to coalesce uh, on the internal branch and instead uh, survive until the ancestral period of the species tree, there are now three lineages present, one from A, one from B, and one from C. And they, then each of those three pairs is equally likely to be the next to coalesce so that the probability conditional on lineages A and B surviving above the species tree, the probability of getting a matching gene tree topology is only uh, one third. So the probability of getting a gene tree topology that matches the species tree topology is then 1 minus 2 thirds e to the minus t. We can plot that probability. Uh, the red line represents 1 minus 2 thirds e to the minus t, the probability that a gene tree matches the species tree uh, in this three taxon case. The blue line represents the probability of getting a particular discordant uh, gene tree, uh, in this case uh, with B and C coalescing more recently uh, than uh, either does with A, and this uh, probability is also the same uh, if A and C coalesce more recently than either does with B uh, by symmetry. Uh, so the probability that the matching, uh, the probability of obtaining the matching gene tree under this model uh, is greater than the probability of obtaining either of the discordant, uh, either specific discordant uh, gene tree in this three taxon case. So one of the curious properties uh, that has resulted from uh, looking in more detail at this probability distribution of gene trees conditional on a species tree uh, is what we've termed anomalous gene trees. So anomalous gene trees, uh, as we'll see, uh, are gene tree topologies uh, that are more likely to be produced under the multi-species coalescent than uh, the topology, the gene tree topology that matches the species tree. Uh, so we'll see that anomalous gene trees are a source of inconsistency in species tree inference algorithms. So first, uh, we need to discuss uh, labeled histories and labeled topologies. So the labeled history for a gene tree is its sequence of coalescence events. And here we have two trees uh, which both have the same labeled topology. In both cases, uh, A and B have a common ancestor and C and D have a common ancestor, but the two trees represent different labeled histories, different sequences of coalescences. On the left, A and B coalesce more recently, and in the tree on the right, C and D coalesce more recently. So if we randomly join pairs of lineages, uh, which is what happens under the multi-species coalescent, we randomly join pairs of lineages until a common ancestor is found, uh, this process will lead to a uniform distribution over the set of possible labeled histories. For four tax of a number of labeled histories uh, is 18. If we think about starting from four lineages, looking backwards in time, there are four choose two ways to choose uh, which of the first two uh, lineages, which, are, which two lineages are the first two to coalesce. Uh, then we're left with three lineages. There are three choose two ways uh, to find uh, which pair among the next, uh, which pair among those three lineages uh, is the first to coalesce. And then we're left with only uh, two lineages and they only have one way to coalesce. So there are 18 labeled histories possible for four taxa. 
Now, if the branch lengths of a species tree are sufficiently short, uh, remember we're thinking about species trees as fixed parameters with a topology and a set of branch lengths. Uh, if those branch lengths are sufficiently short, then it's very likely that most coalescences in the gene tree will occur more anciently than the species tree root. So in this uh, diagram, uh, the gene tree topology uh, is not determined until uh, the period above the root because all of the lineages fail to coalesce along the internal branches. So if the gene tree lineages survive until this period above the root, remember there's a uniform distribution over the possible labeled histories. Uh, if we look uh, at symmetric uh, topologies, uh, those symmetric topologies each have two different labeled histories. Uh, so uh, the symmetric topology in which A and B coalesce and C and D coalesce, that topology can be produced in either order, A and B first or C and D first. Whereas the gene tree topology that matches the species tree topology uh, can only be produced in one sequence, uh, A and B coalescing first, uh, then the ancestor of A and B coalescing with C, and then the ancestor uh, coalescing with D. So if the species tree branch lengths are sufficiently short, it will turn out that the probability of getting a topology uh, that is symmetric, to the probability of getting the topology represented by these two labeled histories uh, will be close to one-ninth, whereas the probability of getting a matching topology, a matching gene tree topology, will be close to one-eighteenth. And therefore, the probability of getting uh, this symmetric topology will exceed the probability of getting the tree that matches, the gene tree that matches the species tree. So we call gene tree topologies whose probability exceeds the probability of the matching gene tree topology anomalous gene trees. And uh, here's an example. Uh, if we have a species tree uh, represented on the left, and uh, we set the internal branch lengths to 0.14, and that's in units of n generations. Uh, we have the gene tree frequency distribution on the right, computed using the Degnan-Salter formula. And we can see that the matching gene tree has probability around 0.125, uh, whereas the symmetric topology where A and B coalesce and C and D coalesce has probability 0.132, which exceeds the probability of the matching gene tree. So what we can next do is search the space of possible species tree branch lengths to find the region of the parameter space in which these anomalous gene trees are obtained. And that is shown uh, here in the plot on the right, where uh, the orange region uh, and the blue region combined represent the region in which there's at least one anomalous gene tree, at least uh, one gene tree whose, uh, uh, whose probability exceeds the probability of the matching gene tree. In the blue region, there are more, there's more than one anomalous gene tree. In fact, there are three anomalous gene trees uh, in that region. So this space in which branch lengths are small for this four taxon asymmetric species tree topology, uh, those, this region uh, represents uh, what we've called the anomaly zone, the region uh, uh, in parameter space under the multi-species coalescent where uh, there exist gene tree topologies that are more probable under the model than the matching gene tree topology. So for three uh, species, so I've talked about how there are no anomalous gene trees. I showed that the probability of getting a matching gene tree uh, is greater than the probability of getting uh, either of the uh, either specific uh, non-matching gene tree topology. Uh, the red line is always higher uh, than the blue line, assuming that all uh, branch lengths of the species tree are positive. Uh, for four species, uh, the asymmetric species tree topology uh, produces anomalous gene trees, or AGTs, uh, but symmetric species trees uh, do not have anomalous gene trees. For five or more species, uh, it turns out that regardless of the species tree topology, there exists a region 
in the uh, there exists a region in the parameter space in the space of possible species tree branch lengths where anomalous gene trees are produced and uh, to give a sketch of the proof uh, what we can see is that uh, if we make all species tree branch lengths sufficiently short then all of the gene tree coalescences will occur above the root and if all of the gene tree co gene tree coalescences occur above the root, then the topology that's most likely to be produced is the topology that has the largest number of labeled histories. Uh, there are many such topologies uh, up to permutation in most cases. So uh, for the vast majority of species tree topologies, uh, all we need to do is make the branch lengths extremely short. We'll force all the coalescences to be above the root and then we'll be most likely to produce a gene tree topology that uh, has a large number of labeled histories. So the only cases that are hard uh, in order to show that any species tree topology with five or more species produces at least one anomalous gene tree, the only cases that are hard are the cases in which the species tree topology uh, is a topology that has a large number of labeled histories. Uh, one such uh, example is uh, shown in this picture. Uh, here, uh, the red branch is set to be long, and the yellow branch is set to be uh, short, the yellow branches. And uh, what we see here is that uh, taxa E and F, their gene lineages have sufficient time to find a coalescence uh, along the red branch, uh, whereas the lineages from A, B, C, and D uh, do not have sufficient time to find a common ancestor uh, along the yellow branch. That means that above the root, uh, what's most likely to happen is that one of the lineages from A, B, C, or D is likely to coalesce with the lineage ancestral to E and F, uh, rather than having the lineages from A, B, C, and D uh, coalesce in the order that would be expected from the species tree. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, the way that anomalous gene trees are produced is not by making all branch lengths short, it's by making some branch lengths short and some branch lengths long. Uh, so that's an example with six taxa uh, and a sort of inductive uh, style proof uh, can be used to show uh, that for uh, any number of taxa, five or more, uh, any species tree gives rise to anomalous gene trees. And Part of the idea of that uh, induction is shown here, where essentially uh, what we do is for most of the species tree uh, branches, we make those branches very long, and we find some subtree uh, within uh, a bigger species tree, uh, where we make the branches uh, short uh, or, or long, or a mixture of short and long in such a way as to produce uh, anomalous uh, gene trees uh, within uh, that subtree. Uh, so in this case, we can produce anomalous gene trees for a 10 taxon uh, species tree by producing anomalous uh, subtrees uh, in this left part of the species tree and allowing all lineages to coalesce in the order expected from the species tree everywhere else uh, in the species tree topology. So uh, what implications uh, does this result that anomalous gene trees exist for the four taxon asymmetric species tree topology and uh, trees with uh, five or more taxa? What implications does it have for inference methods? So the first inference method that we might expect, uh, ways of inferring species trees from lists of gene trees, uh, is just to take the most commonly observed gene tree topology. Uh, so we have a list of gene tree topologies, and we look at that list, find the topology that's most common on that list, and we declare that topology to be our estimate of the species tree. And we've called this the democratic vote uh, after uh, uh, a comment uh, about this method in the book, The Ancestor's Tale uh, by Richard Dawkins. So because of anomalous gene trees, uh, this method, democratic vote, is statistically inconsistent in estimating the species tree. And uh, in the anomaly zone, the region in which 
Uh, the most likely gene tree disagrees with the species tree. Uh, the democratic vote procedure will estimate uh, this symmetric uh, species tree topology, uh, whereas it should have estimated uh, this uh, asymmetric uh, species tree topology if it were to have been consistent. So democratic vote is inconsistent in estimating the species tree. So that's the first of a series of methods that I'm now going to discuss uh, to discuss their consistency properties. Uh, and uh, here is uh, the list uh, that I'll go through uh, now uh, one at a time. Uh, so this is just a subset of all of the methods that have in recent years uh, been proposed as ways of estimating species trees from multilocus uh, genetic data. So we can essentially classify methods of estimating species trees uh, into methods that start from a list of gene trees and then do some kind of computation on gene trees that have already been obtained. And uh, using that collection of gene trees, uh, produce an estimate of a species tree. So technically, we could call those consensus type methods. Uh, the other class of methods uh, would be methods that start directly from the uh, genetic data and do not necessarily proceed through an intermediate step of estimating, uh, species, uh, estimating gene trees before estimating the species tree. Uh, so the collection of methods that I'm uh, going to discuss are all of the first type, all uh, consensus methods, methods that start from a set of gene trees and produce an estimate of a species tree. And uh, um, the reason for focusing on these methods is that it tends to be uh, easier to uh, obtain uh, proofs or analytical results about them and to have a better understanding uh, of their properties without focusing uh, exclusively on simulation. Uh, that's not to say that they will necessarily perform better than uh, other methods. So I've talked about how uh, democratic vote uh, has the property uh, that it is not consistent if the species tree uh, lies in the anomaly zone, if the species tree branch lengths lie in the anomaly zone. Uh, but uh, it also has the property uh, that it takes a fairly small number of loci uh, required to uh, reach the asymptotic estimate. So if we had infinitely many genes sampled according to the probabilities in the Degnan-Salter formula, the probabilities under the multi-species coalescent, uh, we could use that complete probability distribution to figure out what we might expect a method to do if we had an infinite amount of data. And for democratic vote, it doesn't take that many uh, loci, finite, a finite sample of loci, it doesn't take that big of a finite sample to uh, get close to the prediction of the model uh, in the case of having an infinite amount of data. So it doesn't take that many loci to reach the asymptotic estimate that would be obtained with uh, complete knowledge of the probability uh, probabilities of all uh, possible gene trees. So now let's look at some of the other methods. Uh, so um, uh, so is it possible for the uh, most likely ranked gene tree to disagree with the ranked species tree? And this is ongoing work uh, with uh, James Degnan and Tanya Stadler. So we saw before that um, in the case of uh, the four taxon species tree, the reason that anomalous gene trees were produced had to do with labeled histories. So a ranked species tree, we'll call a ranked species tree, the species tree topology uh, together with the order in which species uh, splits occur. And a ranked gene tree, the gene tree topology together with the order in which gene coalescences occur. Uh, so because the reason that anomalous gene trees were produced had something to do with ranks, with labeled histories, uh, we might expect that by focusing exclusively on ranked trees, uh, we might be able to circumvent uh, the um, uh, anomalous gene tree prob problem and find another way to get consistent inference of species trees. So in this four taxon case, uh, even though 
the sum of the probabilities of uh, these two uh, rankings, these two labeled histories, exceeds the probability of the ranking that matches the ranking of the species tree, it turns out uh, that uh, this particular ranking uh, has the highest probability among all uh, ranked uh, gene trees. So what we might propose that we could do is uh, try to estimate, instead of estimating gene trees, estimate ranked gene trees and use that collection of ranked gene trees to estimate a species tree. Uh, okay, so in the three taxon case, uh, there are no anomalous ranked gene trees. So there are no uh, ranked gene trees whose probabilities exceed the probability of the ranking that matches the ranked, the ranked species tree. So anomalous ranked gene trees are going to be uh, ranked gene trees whose probabilities exceed the probability of the matching ranking, the, uh, the ranking that matches the species tree. Uh, and in the three taxon case, uh, rankings are superfluous uh, because uh, a, a ranked tree for three taxa uh, is the same as the unranked tree. Uh, and for four species, it will also turn out to uh, be the case that there are no anomalous uh, ranked gene trees. However, uh, for five or more species, uh, we found that uh, anomalous ranked gene trees uh, do in fact exist. Uh, so uh, the general theorem is that with five or more species, any non-caterpillar, non-pseudo-caterpillar uh, species tree topology has some ranking uh, that produces at least one anomalous ranked gene tree. Uh, so a reminder, caterpillar uh, species tree, uh, sometimes called a pectinate uh, tree, uh, caterpillar tree uh, is a tree uh, in which there exists one internal node that's descended from all other internal nodes. Uh, and uh, what we've termed a pseudo-caterpillar uh, tree uh, is a tree that looks just like a caterpillar except uh, this third uh, lineage, this third branch, uh, instead forms a second cherry with the fourth branch. So it's sort of like a caterpillar, uh, except uh, slightly different for uh, uh, two of the taxa. So any non-caterpillar, non-pseudo-caterpillar species tree topology has some ranking that produces at least one anomalous rank gene tree. So we'll see some examples uh, uh, on the next slide. So suppose we had a species tree that looked like this one on the left. Uh, in this case, uh, its ranking is such that D and E uh, have a more recent common ancestor than any other pair of lineages. Uh, next is A and B. Uh, and then next is uh, the grouping of A, B, and C. So if this is the ranked species tree, uh, it turns out that these rankings on the right uh, are more likely to be produced under the multi-species coalescent uh, than the ranking that matches this, the ranked species tree. Uh, so in uh, this one uh, over here, uh, A and B coalesce first, uh, then uh, the grouping of A, B, and C, and then next, uh, the grouping of D and E. Uh, these are gene lineages. Uh, and then the one on the bottom, A and B coalesce first, uh, then D and E, uh, then the grouping of A, B, and C. So these are uh, ranked gene trees that are more likely to be produced than the ranking that matches the species tree. Uh, but we can see that uh, they have the same uh, topology uh, as the species tree. So if we ignore the rankings, uh, these uh, topologies uh, are identical. Uh, however, uh, it also turns out that these uh, rankings, these ranked gene trees are more likely to be produced uh, than the ranking that matches the species tree. And in these two cases, the, uh, uh, in these two cases, the ranking that uh, is more likely to be produced than the ranking that matches the species tree uh, does not have the same uh, topology as the species tree. So we can actually go further than saying that with five or more species, any non-caterpillar non-pseudo-caterpillar species tree topology has some ranking that produces at least one anomalous ranked gene tree. Uh, it turns out that most non-caterpillar, 
non-pseudocaterpillar ranked species tree topologies produce at least one anomalous ranked gene tree. So uh, not only can we find at least one way of ranking a species tree uh, topology so that it will have anomalous ranked gene trees, most rankings uh, will have anomalous uh, ranked gene trees. Uh, and uh, this uh, result is obtained through a constructive proof uh, that works uh, for most cases but does not apply to all cases. So it's still a somewhat open question about whether uh, ranked species tree topologies not covered by uh, our proof uh, have anomalous ranked gene trees. Sorry, no, no can, I, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Uh, so, the, in my understanding that exists that for when you say most, you mean that there exists a collection of branch lengths for which this okay. exists. I mean, it's it's different than saying that that most branch okay. lengths. Okay. So this is the uh, most uh, applied to the combinatorial set of objects, uh, the collection of ranked species tree topologies. Uh, so uh, if we look at the complete collection of all ranked species tree topologies, uh, some of those topologies will be caterpillars, uh, some will be pseudocaterpillars, uh, and those ranked species tree topologies uh, do not have anomalous ranked gene trees. Uh, most of the rest of the ranked species tree topologies we can show have anomalous uh, ranked gene trees. Uh, and uh, there's a small uh, remaining uh, group uh, for which uh, we don't actually know what happens. But just, but I just want to make sure it's so. It's so when you say there exists an anomalous, uh, I can't remember exactly what you use, but when, it, when there exists this, these anomalous situations, you mean that there ex for each one of these there exists a collection of timings, and i.e. branch lengths. Yes. So that, that's different than saying the sort of a large correct collection of those branch lengths give that's anomalous correct. behavior. That's that's correct. So I, I am not making any claims about the fraction of branch length space uh, and what fraction of branch length space gives that anomalous behavior uh, for these ranked trees. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so back to our methods of estimating species trees. Uh, so suppose what we did was we took our most commonly observed ranked gene tree topology, and we took that most commonly observed ranked gene tree topology, uh, stripped away uh, the ranking, and just treated uh, that topology as our estimate of the species tree topology. That method will turn out to be statistically inconsistent uh, in estimating uh, the ranked species tree uh, in um, uh, most, uh, uh, or in, in part of the parameter space. So not making any claims about uh, uh, the fraction of the parameter space, but uh, at least in part of the parameter space. So here's a ranked species tree, uh, and uh, here is a potential anomalous uh, ranked uh, gene tree uh, for that species tree. So if this were the ranked species tree, uh, then this procedure of using the most commonly observed uh, ranked uh, gene tree topology uh, would be inconsistent in estimating uh, the ranked species tree. So that's our uh, second uh, method. And uh, let me now proceed a little bit more quickly uh, through uh, the rest of the methods. Uh, next is a greedy consensus. And this is the method that's sometimes called majority rule extended, at least by the FILOP program. Uh, and the idea of greedy consensus is that we list all groupings, all clusters of taxa observed in all gene trees. Then we sort those clusters in decreasing order of frequency, decreasing order of how often they occur across all of the gene trees. Then we build a species tree estimate from the most common compatible clusters. So starting at the top of our list of frequency, uh, we start building a species tree estimate, uh, continuing down the list, uh, taking uh, clusters that are compatible uh, with those that have already been assembled into our estimate and ignoring 
uh, those that are incompatible uh, with clusters that are already part of the estimate. So greedy consensus among gene tree topologies, uh, while in a large fraction of the parameter space, converges fairly rapidly to the correct species tree, uh, it has the property that in some of the parameter space, it's too greedy. Uh, so it's too eager to create a binary uh, species tree uh, rather than uh, declaring uh, that some uh, nodes uh, cannot uh, be resolved. So this is a diagram for our four taxon case again. Uh, and this is computed analytically using the four taxon probabilities from the Degnan and Salter formula. Uh, the x-axis is uh, the deeper internal branch. The y-axis is the uh, more recent internal branch. And in the blue regions, uh, the greedy consensus method is inconsistent. Uh, so it converges on uh, an incorrect estimate of the species tree. And I've also shown uh, here the anomaly zone, uh, the collection of regions in which democratic vote uh, is inconsistent, uh, which at least for four taxon, uh, the four taxon case, uh, the four taxon asymmetric case, the uh, uh, anomaly zone for democratic vote uh, is bigger than the region in which greedy consensus is inconsistent. Um, so uh, while this is a fairly nice uh, method in that uh, it doesn't have uh, as big of a set uh, in which uh, it's inconsistent, uh, it's still uh, not uh, consistent over the entire parameter space. Okay, so, yes, question? Sorry, um, yeah, so Joanna Silva would like to know, I, I, this is kind of following up on mine, I guess it's a similar mm -hmm. sort of question, it is in the, in the previous example, is the inconsistency dependent on the relative branch lengths? Um, yes, so the inconsistency um, is, uh, is dependent on the branch lengths. Uh, so in part of the space, um, greedy consensus in this white part of the space, greedy consensus will be consistent. Uh, in the blue part of the space, greedy consensus will be inconsistent. And uh, in uh, these orange parts of the space, greedy consensus is consistent, but democratic vote is inconsistent. So, uh, uh, so uh, I guess partly depends on how we'd like to define consistency, uh, whether we'd like to say that a method is consistent if everywhere in the space uh, it produces um, uh, the uh, correct estimate uh, asymptotically, or if we'd like to say that consistency is a parameter dependent uh, property, uh, whether uh, we say that a method is uh, consistent, uh, conditional on whatever the parameters are, in which case uh, all of the methods uh, that I'm describing are consistent uh, in some sense in most of the parameter space. So clearly, um, if you put, uh, if you allow branch lengths to go uh, uh, to get arbitrarily large, um, uh, uh, most possible uh, random choices of uh, parameter values are likely to be in the region in which a correct, a correct estimate will be obtained from an infinite amount of data. Okay. All right, so next is uh, minimize uh, deep coalescences. So this is a method that dates back to the uh, influential paper of Madison in 1997 uh, and was later studied uh, by Madison and Knowles in 2006 and then by Than and Nachle uh, recently in 2009. And the idea of this method is that we try to find species tree, uh, we try to propose a species tree estimate that does not require that many, quote, deep coalescences. So if we look over, here we have a gene tree and species tree pair. And if we look at this gene tree, uh, species tree uh, pair, we can see that on some internal branches of the species tree, multiple gene lineages survive to the top of the branch. Uh, so for example, here, uh, A and B, their gene lineages 
survive to the top of this first internal branch. Uh, and then only afterwards do they coalesce. Uh, first, uh, the B and C lineages coalesce, then their ancestor uh, coalesces with the lineage from A. Then on the next internal branch, uh, that ancestor of A, B, and C uh, fails to coalesce with the lineage from D. Uh, so both of those lineages survive to the top of the branch. Uh, then both of those lineages and the lineage from E survive to the top of the next branch. Uh, and then um, on the uh, next, then the last internal branch, uh, all three of those uh, lineages coalesce. So a deep coalescence event is an event in which uh, uh, lineages fail to coalesce uh, along a branch. So we would count uh, this failure of A and B to coalesce on this internal branch as one deep coalescence. We count the failure of the lineage from A, B, and C to coalesce with the lineage from D on this branch uh, to be uh, that failure uh, to coalesce to be another deep coalescence. Uh, and then that failure of uh, that, uh, those two lineages to coalesce with the lineage from E, that would be two deep coalescences because we're pushing three lineages uh, up higher into the tree uh, rather than just two. So for any hypothesized species tree uh, and any hypothesized or any hypothesized species tree in any gene tree, uh, we can count uh, how many coalescences are deep. And uh, Than and Nachle uh, have a nice uh, dynamic programming algorithm that uh, counts the number of deep coalescences for an arbitrary uh, gene tree and species tree, or an arbitrary collection of gene trees and species trees. So next, once we've counted the deep coalescence cost for a given species tree, we can find the species tree topology that minimizes this deep coalescence cost. So this is the method uh, proposed uh, by Madison in 1997, and then uh, finally uh, implemented uh, by Than and Nachle uh, in a general case uh, in the recent paper in 2009. Uh, so this is a nice, uh, uh, somewhat of a version of a parsimony idea uh, for inferring uh, species trees uh, from gene trees, finding the species tree topology that minimizes the deep coalescence cost. Well, it's also inconsistent. Uh, so here is a uh, four taxon case. Uh, and um, for lack of a better term, the region under uh, this uh, f of x curve uh, is the uh, MDC inconsistent zone, the region in which the minimized deep coalescence procedure um, can uh, pr uh, does produce uh, an incorrect uh, species tree estimate if given uh, probabilities, if given gene trees proportional to their probability under the Degnan-Salter formula. Like greedy consensus, however, uh, it does uh, converge fairly rapidly to the correct species tree in much of the rest of the space. Uh, so in much of the rest of the space where branch lengths x and y are fairly long, uh, it converges to the correct species tree. However, in the region under uh, the f of x curve, uh, it fails to converge uh, to the correct species tree. Uh, and similarly to the democratic vote, uh, there's a region which is under this g of x uh, curve in which there are multiple uh, species tree topologies with lower MDC cost uh, than the, um, uh, there, where there are multiple uh, uh, proposed species tree topologies uh, with lower MDC cost than the true species tree topology. So this is a four taxon result, uh, but uh, using a similar uh, type of idea uh, to uh, the proof uh, that democratic vote uh, is inconsistent um, uh, uh, in the general case of five or more, uh, and using a similar idea to a proof that greedy consensus is inconsistent in the case of five or more uh, taxa. Uh, it also turns out that for five or more taxa, uh, any species tree topology uh, with five or more taxa has a region of its parameter space, just has some region of its parameter space, uh, some set of branch lengths uh, in which uh, minimized deep coalescences uh, is inconsistent. So um, that's uh, minimize uh, deep coalescences. Uh, and uh, next, 
Uh, uh, let me talk about uh, majority rule consensus. So this is related to uh, greedy consensus. Uh, again, it starts with the first step of listing all groupings observed in all gene trees and sorting clusters in decreasing order of frequency. But then we build the species tree estimate only from the clusters that occur in more than half of the gene trees. Yes. Question. Sorry, I just want to let you know that it would be great if we could wrap up in about seven minutes or so. Okay. It's just, I don't want to, sorry about that. Sure, okay. Uh, so, uh, majority rule consensus uh, is um, uh, is not as greedy as greedy consensus. Uh, it uh, builds uh, species trees only from clusters that occur in more than half of the gene trees. Uh, and um, uh, if uh, it can't produce a bifurcating tree, it simply fails to resolve some of the nodes. And uh, this uh, turns out to be a benefit in terms of its consistency property, because majority rule consistent majority rule consensus uh, is uh, at worst unresolved. So it's never it never produces an estimate that contains a clade that's not on the uh, true species tree. So here's uh, the four on symmetric case in the white region. Majority rule consensus uh, gives the correct estimate. Uh, and in these other uh, colored regions, uh, it gives an estimate that uh, has uh, an estimate for which we can resolve uh, s uh, unresolved nodes in the estimated species tree so as to produce uh, the true species tree topology. Uh, so at worst, uh, we're left with some unresolved nodes. Uh, we never get a resolved node that is not part of the true species tree. Um, maximum likelihood uh, from uh, gene tree distribution. Um, this is a method uh, that uh, takes advantage of identifiability properties of the Degnan and Salter uh, probability distribution. Uh, so if given a list of gene tree frequencies, uh, this list of gene tree frequencies uh, uniquely identifies the species tree uh, together uh, with its branch lengths. So that's interesting because it's using only topological information to infer both topological and branch length information. So from this list of uh, gene tree probabilities, uh, we can uniquely identify the uh, species tree topology and branch lengths, and that gives us a consistent uh, uh, way of inferring a species tree uh, species tree topology and branch lengths from uh, gene trees, uh, it just has the, pro the problem that it takes a very large number of gene trees in order to get good practical estimates of the gene tree dist uh, frequency distribution. So although this method is consistent, um, uh, although the method is consistent, it takes a very large amount of data before, um, uh, before uh, it produces the correct estimate. Uh, so that's our first uh, consistent method, but there's a trade-off between consistency and speed. Uh, the methods that uh, turn out to be more consistent or, or that are provably consistent uh, require a very large number of loci to reach the asymptotic estimate that we'd get from knowing the full probability distribution of gene trees. Um, and since I'm short on time, um, I'll skip some of the details of uh, the remaining methods and just refer you to uh, uh, the places where they've been uh, published. So uh, the GLASS method or maximum tree uh, is uh, recently published in two papers, uh, one by Liu, Yu, and Pearl in Journal of Mathematical Biology, and the other by Marcel and Roche in uh, IEEE uh, Transactions on Bioinformatics and Computational Biology. Another consistent method. Uh, and R star consensus, uh, which was studied uh, along with majority rule consensus uh, and greedy consensus uh, in a paper of Degnan et al. in 2009, Systematic Biology. So that fills out the table of consistency and speed for the collection of uh, methods, uh, these eight methods uh, that I wanted to tell you about. And I just want to close with two. 
uh, points. Uh, one is that although most of what I've shown uh, relates to uh, complete descriptions of what happens with four taxa and then some general kind of theorem with five or more taxa, I think we can say that the larger the number of taxa, the greater the amount of complexity we might expect involving anomalous uh, gene trees. So if we see something strange happening with four taxa, a method not performing uh, very well, uh, we have reason to believe that it probably uh, won't get better uh, with more taxa. Uh, so this uh, is just an example of the number of anomalous gene trees uh, with five taxa uh, instead of with four. Uh, and the five taxa case here of a caterpillar has uh, uh, three parameters. Uh, these are four different slices of the parameter space. Uh, the slice on the right uh, is basically sending one of the branch lengths uh, really large uh, so that the five taxon case essentially reduces to a four taxon case. And uh, in that uh, reduced, uh, that five taxon case reducing to a four taxon case, the region of the parameter space in which anomalous gene trees are produced uh, looks just like what we'd expect based on the computations in the four taxon case. However, if that uh, branch length T4 is shorter, then the space of branch lengths is partitioned into a much larger number of regions. So just looking in this uh, diagram, uh, we can see each different colored region represents a different uh, con uh, collection of anomalous gene trees that occur in that region of the parameter space. So going from four taxa to five taxa uh, generates uh, this much more complicated partition of the parameter space where different collections of anomalous gene trees occur. Uh, so that's one point. And then the last point is I just want to point out uh, uh, the idea of looking at ancestral population structure, uh, which is from recent work of Slatkin and Pollock. Uh, so in our multi-species coalescent, we assume that each pair of lineages in any population is equally likely to be the next to coalesce. And what Slatkin and Pollock uh, did in a paper in 2008 was they supposed that uh, ancestral populations are structured. And essentially, in this picture, uh, we can imagine that there's a barrier to gene flow between various different uh, subpopulations. Uh, and if that barrier is sufficiently strong along these internal branches, then it's likely that lineages will survive until the tops of those internal branches uh, and that uh, it will be possible to generate uh, additional gene tree discordance. And that's exactly what they found in this case, that for small migration rates between themes, uh, it was more likely in this three taxon case that gene lineages B and C would coalesce uh, with each other before either coalesced with A. So that even in the three taxon case, it was possible to produce anomalous gene trees uh, in this model. Uh, so uh, that suggests that an important uh, future direction is to look at what happens if we expand the multi-species coalescent to accommodate uh, this uh, migration uh, and structure in ancestral populations and see what that does to the consistency behavior of the various methods. So to summarize, a species tree can disagree with the gene tree that it's most likely to produce, uh, so it can produce anomalous gene trees. And this discordance uh, looks like it becomes more extreme with more taxa. Uh, there's a trade-off between consistency and speed of convergence. So there are some methods that are consistent, but that take a very large number of loci before they start to converge on the correct species tree estimate. But there are other methods that uh, have a good speed of convergence but are not consistent, do not necessarily give the correct estimate uh, with infinite data over the entire parameter space. Uh, so uh, it's an ongoing uh, challenge to figure out quantitatively where this trade-off between consistency and speed uh, kicks in, uh, whether uh, methods that are inconsistent in some of the space uh, do really well with a small amount of data in uh, the rest of the space, uh, and whether methods that are provably consistent over the whole space are practical to implement 
uh, uh, without having uh, impracticably, impractically large numbers, large numbers of loci. And then finally, uh, one of the next steps is to expand uh, the consideration to include uh, consistency and accuracy under more general conditions, such as ancestral population structure. So uh, collaborators on this work uh, have included uh, David Bryant from Auckland, uh, Mike DiGiorgio, uh, Ethan Jewett, Rhonda Tao, Kwong Than in my lab, uh, James Degnan in Canterbury, and Tanya Stadler uh, in Zurich. And uh, the work has been supported uh, by uh, the National Science Foundation. Uh, so uh, thanks, uh, everyone, uh, for listening, and I uh, look forward to uh, taking uh, any questions.